We're continuing to follow the breaking news out of Russia. Russian President Vladimir Putin is promising swift justice for a mercenary group whose revolt he calls an armed mutiny. In an overnight address, Putin calls the Wagner Group's rebellion a treasonous stab in the back. The Wagner Group's leader claims he and his fighters have taken control of a southern Russian city where the headquarters for the war on Ukraine are based. NBC News is working to verify these claims. We'll follow this breaking story all morning right here on MSNB, uh, right here on MSNBC. But joining me now for more analysis is retired U.S. Army Lieutenant General Steph Twitty, former deputy commander of U.S. European Command. Um, um, J Lieutenant General, thank you very much for, for coming to the show. How serious of a threat is President Putin facing here? Yeah, this could be a very serious threat. Uh, particularly if Prozosin starts to get a groundswell of uh, support from Russian civ civilians, then you're dealing with a civil war, and then this makes it a war for Putin on two fronts. So this is the worst disaster for Putin if uh, this groundswell uh, occurs. The other thing is this provides an opportunity for the Ukrainians to drive a wedge here and use this to their advantage during the war. Putin's mind now is on his own internal conflict. And so this provides an area where the Ukrainians can take advantage of if they could uh, move out and see some opportunities here. All right. I, 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 I want to talk about the Ukraine aspect uh, of this internal rebellion in, in Russia in a moment. But let's stick with what's going on um, in Russia. Does Prigozhin, the leader of the Wagner Group, have the resources to actually follow through on his threat to move from the southern city that he says he's occupying to Moscow as he's threatened? Absolutely he does. If you remember, and I want you to think about this, he's the only force that's been successful in Ukraine. He was able to take Bakhmut when the Russians couldn't do it. And so if you look across the war in Ukraine over the past year and a half, the Russian uh, military, they've been a failure in Kyiv. They've been a failure here in Kyrgyzstan. They've been a failure in Kharkiv. And so uh, Prozosin has had some success with the Wagner Group. And so he has the resources. He's had, he has a band of thugs, prisoners, convicts, that really do not have any allegiance to Putin whatsoever and may not even have allegiance to the country of Russia. Mm. Uh, but when this, this is what happens when you provide militias the ammunition and you don't put any guardrails associated with them and you tell them to get out there and fight, they could turn on you. And this is what's happening now. And, and um, um, Lieutenant General, the other thing, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we should keep in mind in terms of the resources of the Wagner Group, it's not that just, just that they've been hired by Putin to basically fight his war and do so more successfully than his own troops, but that Prigozhin, the head of the Wagner Group, is wildly wealthy. He can finance this rebellion on his own. Am I right in, in, in thinking that? Absolutely. He has a tremendous amount of resources, particularly coming out of Africa. As you know, he's used his forces to fight in Africa, and he's been able to resource his mili military from the minerals, the diamonds, and so forth that he's been able to, to gain out of Africa. So he's had, he has a tremendous amount of wealth and can fund this fight, probably more so than Putin can fund his own forces at this point. Mm -hmm. One more question on the Russia aspect of this. What does, what does this internal rebellion say about Putin's grip on power in Russia? Well, I think what it really says is, uh, and I alluded to it earlier, the last thing any country should do is allow militias to form and you put no guardrails associated with them. Uh, Pajogin has had free reign throughout this particular war. He's been able to say what he wants to say. He's been able to do what he wants to say. There's no contract between his forces and the military. And so, therefore, they're running around like a band of bandits, and Putin allowed this to happen. Now trying to rein something like that in 
will be very difficult for Putin. He's lost all the uh, disrespect from the Wagner forces, and certainly the Russian military has lost all kind of re respect from the Wagner forces because they have not been capable fighters on the battlefield. And you see on the screen there on the left, Russian President Vladimir Putin. On the right, the head of the Wagner group, Yevgeny Prigozhin. So, Lieutenant General, what sort of impact could all of this have on what's happening in the ground in Ukraine? Yes. Yeah, so, here's an opportunity. How, how the, the Ukrainians taken advantage of this opportunity, uh, we shall see. But this is a huge distraction on the Russian military. Now they're going to have to move forces from various locations to be able to thwart uh, the Wagner Group, which provides an opportunity and may soften up some areas for the Ukrainians to exploit. The other thing is, and I talked about it early, now this provides a two-front war a war in Ukraine and a war within in, in Russia, which, can, which will be a huge distraction. So I would say that the Ukrainians are probably looking at this now and trying to figure out how they can exploit this. Uh, as we see in the breaking news banner there, it says Ukraine, Ukraine signals counteroffensive is making progress. And this is all happening just as um, uh, uh, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has kicked off what has been the long anticipated spring counteroffensive. It's days, maybe even a week or so in progress. Can you talk to us about what that counteroffensive looks like? And again, how what's happening uh, internally in Russia impacts that counteroffensive? Yes. Yeah, so what you're seeing on the Ukrainian battlefield uh, at this point in time, and this is slow progress, but it is intended to be a slow progress. You know, I have a lot of years in, in combat, and it was slow for me as well, particularly when you're talking about mines, tr uh, trenches, dug in bunkers. Uh, elaborate defense systems, you have to fight through all that stuff. And the Ukrainians have been fighting the frontline forces at this particular point, trying to break through that massive defense of the Russians. They're trying to find the vulnerabilities. So that's why this war has been so slow. The, the heavy fight is still to come, where the main Russian defense uh, belt is located. And so, uh, opportunities in the nest, uh, they've been making small progress there. They've been making small progress in the Bakhmut area. And I think we'll continue to see this small progress. And it's going to get tougher and tougher as they go along, go along here. Again, opportunities in terms of the, the Russian conflict that's going on right now. If forces move, from Ukraine to be able to support the internal defense of Russia, uh, there will be uh, opportunities there that will present itself to the Ukrainians that they should exploit.